Hey guys, good evening, this is Gene. Welcome to the 11.9 Workshop, okay? So guys, uh, this is a very different video, okay? So I'm gonna make it uh, straight to the point. Uh, I'm not going to speak Tagalog or Filipino here. It's all gonna be English, okay? So yeah, because there's a special reason for that. I'm gonna explain that to you later, guys. But before we go on, I just I would just like to thank each and every one of you for, uh, for supporting my channel. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing and commenting, asking questions, guys. And if you're not a subscriber on my uh, YouTube channel, you can subscribe here. You can subscribe now, okay? So that's Gene Carada at 11 and Workshop. Also follow me on Facebook. It's Gene Carada at 11 and Workshop. And also I have an, uh, I, I think I have an Instagram, though, uh, but it's not that active. So yeah, uh, if you have some questions, guys, you can reach me uh, on my uh, Facebook page. You know? So I'm gonna put the links in the description there, okay? So, yeah. So, guys, why am, why am I speaking English today? Because I want this uh, blog to, or this uh, video to reach a broader audience. Usually, my audience are Filipinos. Uh, so, I usually speak Tagalog when I'm reviewing tools because I want to reach a, uh, more on Filipino audience. But this time, this is very special because I want to talk, I want to reach uh, foreigners or so foreigner cosplayers like that. So, yeah. So as, as the title say, guys, this is a tutorial, my tutorial on how you oh, how I make cosplay props. Okay, so uh, okay, why am I doing this? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna explain. Okay, so uh, if you guys don't know me, uh, I've been a cosplayer for ten years, exactly ten years. So I started back in 2006. So yeah, my first cosplay was in 2006. That's very long time ago so so and then i stopped cosplaying around 2016 so i I've, I've been uh, cosplaying for like uh, attending conventions and cosplaying for like uh, 10 years so after uh, after that i decided to focus more on my personal life i got a family so i stopped cosplaying uh, in 2016 so it's been i don't know around 8 years now that i uh, I, I i stopped cosplaying however I still love the community. You know, I have a lot of friends in the cosplay community, Philippine cosplay community. I was once a moderator of cosplay.ph and Phil Cosplay, you know, the old the old guys, <laughs> the uh, moderators of uh, cosplay.ph. I know I know most of them, uh, the old the veteran ones. So, yeah, it's it's uh it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um but now uh, I still love making props, even though I'm not cosplaying anymore. I still love making props. I, I, it's just the creative juices in me that is uh, screaming that to create something really good. So uh, I think last week um, I made this prop, guys. So this is the, ah, uh, this is the caravan shotgun from Fallout New Vegas. I love Fallout New Vegas game, so I decided to make a prop. And this one is the caravan shotgun. So it's a prop that it's made 100% from wood. No? So because I'm a woodworker, this material is the one that is familiar with me, wood. So I started making this one. And I like how it turned out. It can be open like that. So and you load the shells here, supposedly, and then close it. And then you can. And this one is convention safe because it doesn't shoot anything it's just a prop so if you look at the uh here it's just a solid wooden prop like those rotc rifles that you can see the cadets are using it's just like that uh why did i make this because uh, a few i think a few weeks ago something happened with the community some jackass bought a live bullet in a convention so now all the prop guns that shoot projectiles are now banned so that's airsoft guns spell guns even nerf guns those are now banned so i said well if if, if you're gonna ban those uh, guns why not make your own gun right and it's convention safe so uh this one the trigger is not working so it doesn't shoot anything there's no way it can shoot anything it still look realistic you can still uh take pictures with it like that so uh you can uh load some fake uh shells here but it won't shoot anything so uh, it's very convenient safe. still uh, although it's uh it doesn't shoot anything uh you have to still be very careful with it this is made of wood 
So uh, if you hit something with this, it's it's gonna hurt. Okay, so this is hard. Uh, so you have to be very, you still have to be very careful, even though you are using uh, wood uh, props like this one. Now, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, wood in your props? Of course, uh, advantages, guys. Wooden props are very very durable. Uh, they're more durable than usual cardboard or Eva foam uh, props. Uh, but the disadvantage is that they are harder to work with because the wood is harder. Uh, and yeah, you need some special tools to uh, make this uh, prop. And don't worry guys, I'm going to show you the tools that I use in making uh, wooden props like this one. In this uh, first part of the video, we're, we're going to focus first on materials and tools. So let's focus on materials. Let's talk about the materials that I use. I, I said I use wood. So what kind of wood specifically would you want to use with your props? I would recommend guys to use uh, pine wood or in our language, we call that palochina. So this one, you can buy sheets like this. You can buy palochina like this at some uh, pallet shops. Uh, these are uh, used in pallets, so they're very cheap. Uh, I think uh, a bundle of this 10 pieces is just around 400, 300 pesos. So that's uh, that's okay. You can start from there. Um, and uh, the, the advantage of uh, this one, of Palochina, uh, aside from it's cheaper, it's lighter. So this one, this gun is very light. You can see it's just a little bit heavier than uh, maybe... Uh, I think it's even lighter than an airsoft gun, so it's very, very lightweight uh, if you're using a uh, soft wood like palachina. But if you use hard wood like mahogany or oak, and that would be very, that would be very heavy as well. So those are the materials that you need. And next material, another important material is wood glue. Okay, so wood glue. Uh, don't use uh, white glue. That you can, uh, you know, almost like that. Don't use that. I would recommend you have to use wood glue specifically for wood and that would be pioneer wood glue the best wood glue in the philippines okay so yeah this one uh i would highly recommend this one uh guys if you uh want to follow this or if you want to list the tools and the materials that i'm talking about i'm gonna put uh, a list on the description box with the links where you can purchase these items okay so let's move on so those are the materials that you need uh, the wood and the uh, uh, ah, glue, yes. Now, uh, I told you this is 100% wood. I use wood, wooden dowels for this one, the barrel. Uh, this one is usually used for mops, you know, in the, mop, the mop handles, broom handles, like that. But you can also use PVC pipe here. Uh, that's okay. You can use PVC pipe. Uh, you can even use uh, other materials. You can combine uh, Eva foam or plastic or PVC, you can combine them in your woodworks. So in woodworks, guys, we have three uh, fundamentals, and it's cutting, attaching, and shaping. So those are the three things that you need to know, uh, and those are the things that we're going to focus now. So first of all, let's focus on cutting wood. So how do we cut wood? Okay, so in the shop here, we have a lot of machines. Uh, very big and expensive machines to cut wood. So we have a table saw, I have a, I have a miter saw, I have a band saw. So I have complete, uh, complete tools to cut wood. However, if you're just starting out and, and you don't want to invest on those things or you don't have a space to invest on those machines, then you can start with a simple hand saw. So this one. So to cut wood, you can use a saw like this. This is a cross-cut saw. Uh, this is the most common kind of saw that you can buy. However, I would not recommend this thing for you guys because to tell you honestly, this is very hard to, even for a carpenter, professional woodworker like me, this is still very hard to use. So if you're going on a hand saw route, I would recommend you purchase this one. This is what we call a Japanese saw or ryoba. The Japanese term for it and this is what is really good because you can uh, it has two sides the, the side here the one with the coarser blade that's used for uh, ripping and the one with the finer one uh, you can use that for cross cut okay so uh, and this is 
a pull saw. So the action, this is pulling. So it cuts through pull. Unlike the, this one, the Western saw, which cuts through push, which is harder to use, this one cuts through pulling. So, and this one is only, uh, uh, it's not that very expensive. This one is from a uh, wad foe. It's only two, 300 pesos. So uh, it's not that expensive. The, Jap the original Japanese saws like this one are very, very expensive. So uh, you just have to make do with what you have. So this one is okay. It's okay now for you guys now. So now, what about here? You can see here in our model. So now you cut the wood uh, to straight. But you can here in our model, you can see that there's a curve here. So how did I cut that curve? I use my bandsaw to cut that curve. But if you don't have a bandsaw or a scroll saw, you can use this one. This one is called a coping saw. And you can see the blade here. It's very thin and it's flexible. So it can go around like this. You can use it to cut curves with this uh, with the coping saw. Uh, you have to combine your uh, coping saw and your uh, hand saw together. Uh, hand saw for straight cuts and this one for curved cuts. Now, uh, what about power tools? If you want to invest or go the power tool route, I would recommend you should get this tool. This one. This is a jigsaw. So this is a very versatile tool. It can do straight cuts and you can do also do curved cuts and it can do it faster than a handsaw. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, guys, to master the jigsaw. Uh, but if you master this one, uh, it will, it's awesome. You can do a lot of things with the jigsaw. You can make uh, prop guns, you can make prop swords, you can make uh, all kinds of stuff using the jigsaw. And I have a video about this, uh, about, about, about a jigsaw, about how to use a jigsaw. And here, we can, you, you can just use different kinds of blades. Uh, this one is what we call a scroll cut blade, which is used for uh, curves. And you can use the cross cut blades as well, the bigger blades. You can even use the jigsaw to cut metal or PVC pipes like that. So there are uh, different kinds of blades for different kinds of jigsaws. Jigsaws can be expensive if you if you're buying the really branded expensive ones. But if you're looking, if you're just starting, you can just buy the cheapest jigsaw you can find around one thousand pesos like that or two thousand pesos. Or just look at the uh, Facebook Marketplace get get used uh, jigsaws like that. And I would recommend to buy the jigsaw with a cord. This one is cordless, but uh, for beginners like you guys, uh, start with a cord. You know, it, it's more uh, uh, it's more convenient for you guys. Okay, all right. Also, guys, you, uh, you're going to need a drill uh, like this one. Uh, not, ex not necessarily a cordless drill. Uh, you just need something to drill and screw uh, screws, okay? So because uh, in, in props like this one, you need to drill holes. Sometimes you need to drill holes and you have to screw. You have to use the uh, screwdrivers like this one. So this one is a very good one. Uh, you don't you don't have to buy the most expensive drill uh, for this drill. You can buy the cheapest one. Uh, there, there are cheap 12 volt drills that only around 500 pesos. So that would work. That would work for you guys uh, for a simple task like that. Also, I like using drills for sanding. There are sanding drums that you can buy like this one. You can put that in your drill and you can use that to sand uh, the curves of your props. Okay. So yeah, that's it. So those are the materials that we use for cutting uh, our cutting our project or cut, cutting the wood. Now, how about shaping the wood? Now, this is very tricky. It's a little bit tricky, guys. So uh, for this one, I shape the wood using a router. And routers are very expensive tools, guys. So uh, unless you have a router at home, I suggest that you should not uh, invest there directly. But you can use many tools to shape wood so the best thing you can use is a file a file or a rasp so this one is what we call a rasp so it's a file that is coarser okay so files use are usually very uh, uh smooth but this one is very coarse look at that it has huge teeth okay so that could really get the wood or get uh excess wood out very quickly However, if you still uh, want 
something that is faster, this one is even better. This is what we call the saw rasp. So it's like it's like a it's like a file but with uh, many saw blades. So this one can really get rid of those uh, excess materials very very quickly. So you just have to uh, shape it with a rough shape and then you have to finish it with a sander. So this one is the sander that I usually use. It is a random orbit sander. I use this to uh, smoothen the wood. But if you don't have one, you can just use good old-fashioned sandpapers like this one. So uh, you can just buy a lot of sandpapers from the hardware store. Uh, start from 80 grit until 240 grit. So yeah, those are, uh, those are already good. Uh, it will take longer if you're sanding this by hand it will take it will take time but uh it's okay uh if you have you've got the time you, you can just uh uh sand this by hand but if you're using using a sanding machine like this one it's okay it's, it's even better or you can use this uh grinder with the flat sanding this this is also sandpaper guys however i would not recommend a grinder uh, you can use a grinder to shape your wood for example, this one you can use that to shape uh, your wood. If, if you have uh, excellent control, you can use a grinder. But I would not recommend this if you're a newbie because grinders, they, they are very, very fast, very, very aggressive. So you can ruin your uh, work with just one mistake. You, you can sand too deep and your work is ruined <laughs> by that time. So I would suggest you should just use a sander and not a grinder but if you're already an expert and you can control the grinder very efficiently then get some grinder it's very fast it's the fastest uh, tool you can have now what about uh, those small details for example here the trigger a uh, small one how, how did i sand this trigger uh you can use sandpaper of course there but you can also use this one this is the uh, we call this the rotary tool, but usually the most common name of this is Dremel. Dremel. This one is not Dremel brand, so you can use this. You can put a sanding uh, drum here, and you can use that to, um, you know, uh, sand the uh, details or make some carvings like that, or you know, uh, uh, battle damage like that. So those things you can use. Also. Uh, you can also use a heat gun like this one. So I will show you how I use my heat gun to make details uh, probably in the next video, guys. So, and of course, you need something like this. These are what we call clamps. Very important you have clamps because this uh, one can help you a lot, if, especially if you're uh, sanding or if you're shaping wood or if you're cutting wood. Uh, you can clamp your work in your table. So that it would not move and you can uh, you can saw you you can uh, sand you can shape very easily when your work is not moving so uh these these are very cheap uh, clamps you can get this from a uh, hardware store is hardware question brands so get the cheapest one you can get uh don't get the expensive stuff okay now uh what other extra tools you need uh, when you're working with uh, wood building your uh, prop? I think you should also need uh, chisels like this one. You don't need to. You don't need the most expensive chisels. Go to your, uh, uh, you know, uh, street uh, sellers like that or in the market. Uh, sometimes they sell cheap chisels like this one. Uh, you don't need the expensive ones as long as it's sharp, guys. So yeah, it's very important that your tools are very sharp because a blunt tool is a dangerous tool. A sharp tool is a safe tool, okay? So, and I think that's it. I think that's just about it. That's uh, all you need. Uh, that's most of the things that you need. Uh, of course, you need some extra. You, know, you, you like uh, 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 measuring uh, tape or pencils like that or rulers, of course, uh, to, to draft your designs. So those are the things that you can uh, add uh, in your uh, tools. And one more thing, another important thing, and this is very, very important, guys. You should think about your safety as well. So I would suggest you invest on a very good respirator like this one. This is, uh, uh, this is not 
there's a 3M rip-off. There's a, uh, yeah, it's an imitation 3M brand, but it works well. So it only costs around 300 pesos. But it, this will protect you, protect your lungs from sawdust, especially if you're working with uh, Palachina or this one. This one sometimes has chemicals in it. So that's formaldehyde, so that can cause cancer. So when you're working or when you're sanding, it's, uh, you should cover your nose so that you would not inhale those chemicals. Also, of course, for example, if you're using a grinder or a sander like that or any kind of power tool, wear safety goggles. This, might save, this may save your life. This may save your eyes, okay? So wear safety goggles every time you use a power tool. So, and get the good safety goggles. Uh, this one, I would not recommend cheap brands for this one. Get good ones like this one. This is the Delta Plus uh, goggles. Uh, these are not very expensive. They're not cheap, but they're not very expensive. But uh, you will think uh, these goggles, if you had an accident, this can save your eyes. Literally save your eyes. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Uh, those are the materials and tools that we need for woodworking, uh, making your own cosplay like uh, props like this one. In the next video, guys, I'm going to show you how I make one. So we're going to make another uh, prop. I'm going to make another rifle from uh, Fallout New Vegas. I think I'm going to make a hunting rifle. So uh, it's almost the same as this one, uh, with, but with no moving parts like this. It's just a solid uh, stock and then a barrel. So that's easier to build than this one. So I'm going to show you that uh, to you guys next time. Okay, so... That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see you guys again next time. Just, just wait for the next part of this video. And in the future videos, I'm going to post, uh, I'm going to upload how I paint, how I stain, how I detail uh, my props like this one so that it would look more realistic. Uh, and also, uh, you know, it would look really worn out. And you, would, you might think that it came from a really post-apocalyptic setting okay <laughs> so yeah so that's it guys thank you so much for watching i'm going to see you guys again next time this is gene from 11i workshop bye